Norma Jean Barry Simon and Nancy Barbical Adams and I, Nancy Merritt Porcari, lived together for about three years before we all got married in 1960. About 10 years later, we started traveling just in the United States for a week or two, almost every summer. We drove all over Florida. We saw everything there was to see in New Orleans and the Deep South. We went from way up north in the California Redwood Country all the way down the Pacific Coast Highway. We've been from Sun Valley across the Rockies through Wyoming, Montana, and the Dakotas. And we went to New England to see the fall colors. It was October 1981 in New Hampshire. We stayed at a resort of little cabins on Big Squam Lake where they had recently filmed the movie on Golden Pond with Katherine Hepburn and Henry Fonda. This resort was actually closed for the season, but Norma had charmed the owner into letting us stay in a little house that was only half closed up. And he gave her the use of a boat to boot. Norma had that effect on men. <laughs> well, Nancy and Norma couldn't wait to take the boat across the lake and find the house where the movie was made. It was a rowboat, but Norma was handy with the oars, and as her dad and brother had taught her all about that stuff. So they found the house. They rolled all the way across the lake. They found the house. They beached the boat, and they went exploring. They had a good old time poking around the house and found the gazebo and the deck on the other side of the house and were there for an hour or so. And when they got back to their starting point, they found that their boat was floating about 30 yards from shore. <laughs> And their oars were floating two separate ways in other directions. <laughs> and there were a big man's boot prints all in the sand. They got really scared, and they both jumped in the water, jeans and all, swam to retrieve the boat and the oars, and then rode all the way back across the lake to our cabin and showed up soaking wet and laughing hysterically. <laughs> We had so much fun that trip that we continued to go fishing together, mostly in Lake Placid, Florida, for a week or so, and we did it every year for 37 years straight. When Norma moved here from La Porte, I was 19 years old, and I worked with her at First Federal in Delray Beach. Her brother, Clarence Berry, had a friend with a vacant house on 15th Street, and he arranged for Norma to rent it. Nancy Barnacle was working the chalkboard. Remember the chalkboards at Merrill Lynch? Across the street, and Norma talked her and me and Pat Valari, who was a dental assistant in town, into moving into Pete's house with her. Norma was several years older than the rest of us and found to her dismay that she had to teach us a lot of stuff. <laughs> she worked with each one of us privately on how to budget our money so that we could pay our share of the rent and the household bills. She divided the household chores into four duty assignments, which rotated every week. The person on kitchen duty had to plan the meals, make up the grocery list, and do the shopping, staying, of course, within the family budget. And that was the easy part. You also had to cook. <laughs> and every night, Norma would very patiently sit on a stool in the kitchen, watching what we were doing and helping us follow the recipes we had picked out. She shared our culinary mistakes, and she applauded our accomplishments, and we loved her for it. Our Norma taught us things. That money is not a mystery, but a tool to be managed. That making dinner is fun, and your faux pas are to be laughed at. And most of all, Norma taught us that a sharing, caring household could bring us happiness. Thank you, Norma. Goodbye. I love you. I'm Michael Simon and nephew to Aunt Norma. I wish I could say something funny to make her laugh because she had a great laugh. It's impossible to put into words all of the big memories and little memories that she created and we created with her. And I'm sure looking out here that all of you have both of those. And that was beautiful, Nancy, because I can see her everywhere you described. For me, Aunt Norma was kind, 
loving, very unassuming, had drawn attention to herself without trying to by being just her. She was a great human being to many people and gave herself to many charitable and civic organizations and opportunities to give to others. And not having children made us all feel like her children and was able, I think, to spread herself in a lot more places than she would have otherwise. And we're blessed, as Lisa said last night, that perhaps some of the reason that Uncle Ernie and she didn't, although they wanted them, they were able to give us all so much more of themselves as parents and grandparents and aunts and uncles. To me, their togetherness was wonderful to see and experience, and I'm grateful for that. Her smile and laughter was the first thing, the first thing that everybody said to me and to each other last night at the wake. My son, 11 years old, who didn't know Aunt Norma as long as most of us, was, we had dinner on Thursday, and the, the first thing he said when I was telling him about some of the trips and things we did that are impossible to say today, the list of them are endless, and anyway, um, he listened to me talk about the University of Miami trips and all these wonderful things, and I stopped, because I can go on forever, as I am now. And he just looked at me with this, because he was listening to everything I said, and he said, you know, the thing about Aunt Norma was her smile. And I had told that to Uncle Ernie the day before, and I said, you're absolutely right. That is, and everybody, I think, felt that from her. She had a quiet strength. Aunt Norma had a very quiet strength. And she was in the room, and she didn't have to do much to show it. She didn't need to. She didn't want to. It didn't make her feel any better by doing so. So she just listened and gave. She suffered and smiled. And she gave everything she had to continuing, I think, to be Aunt Norma to everyone and to keep the presence and the smile that, that Aunt Norma was. And although she did smile, I think it hurt everybody to see that because she didn't, she was just so great and um, she handled it with such grace. Um, I think that although I've said a lot, Aunt Norma made more of a statement by not saying much. So Aunt Norma, less is more. And we love you, and we're very happy to have been blessed to have you in our life. I'm the oldest, so I need glasses. <laughs> There's a story that's been told long ago in our family before I was even walking, and it goes like this. There was a party going on in Delray, and um, Uncle Ernie and Aunt Norma were late. Now, I know that's not unusual, <laughs> but the problem was when they finally did show up, it was just Uncle Ernie, perfectly put together, as he always is, gentlemen. And everybody was so happy to see them and said, well, what happened? You're late. And he said, oh, we got a flat tire along the way. And of course, everybody's looking, and there's no Aunt Norma. Well, where's Norma? Oh, she had to clean up. She had to fix the flat. <laughs> the beauty of this story is that that illustrates the person, the woman that Aunt Norma was as she, how, and how she approached her life. Aunt Norma was a get-it-done gal, a no-nonsense person and a lady in every sense of the word, but was not afraid to bait a hook, clean a fish, or to do whatever it took, no matter how messy it got. Aunt Norma had a wonderful sense of humor and a laugh that I will never forget. I see her in the eyes of my children, which is a gift that I will carry for the rest of my life. She enjoyed her friends and her family and her work and her service to others, and less is more. 
She made a gigantic contribution, con contribution to our family. And while that's the Simon name has done a lot in helping a lot of people and being involved in, in this town, Aunt Norma stands alone in her achievements and her blessings to this town and families and all the children that she knew. She touched so many of you here today and in a way that made each one of us feel as if we were her favorite, which worked really well for me since I was the oldest. <laughs> when she retired from a long and successful career, what did she do? She continued to grow and learn. I mean, she started taking yoga in her 70s. She even belly danced and made her own costume. That was really cool when we were kids to see that. Her time spent giving back to so many through Bethesda Hospital as volunteer brought her warm smile and kind heart to those that we will never know. She, she, it Norma never said, I love this, she never said I'm busy or I'm overwhelmed or I just can't. Instead, her zest for living each moment and her get it done attitude created some incredible moments for her and Uncle Ernie. Just last month, they were sitting at the table and they had received a flyer for another trip, another cruise, which you know that they traveled all the time. Uncle Ernie showed it to her and said, Norma, do you realize we have been to all of these places? The cruise was going to 10 different destinations. They traveled the world together. Beautiful memories, beautiful life. Aunt Norma was a friend and an aunt to very many. Her neighbors or friends and anyone that she had the opportunity to love. In fact, my brother Philip married Molly Tidwell, who grew up right next door to Aunt, Num aunt Norma and Uncle Ernie. Molly already had an Aunt Norma before she actually became an official member of the family. And I'm sure to Molly, that the love that she felt after she was married was no different than the love she felt before she married my brother. I was reading a passage on my way down to Florida out of a really great book that I love and it says the key to a happy marriage because I'm always trying. It said, I believe what marriage is really about is two people spending their lives helping one another become great, the great that we are all capable of being. Both partners need to have their own distinct identity and to keep holding on to and growing and developing that identity. That's how I know he's going to be fine. Aunt Norma demonstrated and touched many because of how, she, how well she loved, how exquisite she loved, and how even though they were very, very different and had different passions, they made it work beautifully and as one. Uncle Ernie is Fred, and Aunt Norma is Wilma. Those were their nicknames. So fitting for each other. As the years went on, his ability to give back and show her all the things that she needed when she needed them the most was demonstrated in the switching of the roles. She taught him how to love. She taught him how to take care of her. He gave it all back. Every single thing she ever wanted, she had. She was happy, she was joyful, she was strong, she was beautiful, she was a lady, she was classy, she was conservative, she was beautiful, she was funny. I just, I know that when the strength was leaving her body, because of everything that she was, and everything that she is in heaven. They fought this fought, fight together and they got it done together. And I love Aunt Norma as I love each one of my family. Take the time to tell the people that you love every day. Remember their blessings because if not have been touched by them, you would not be the person that you are today. Never forget those that are waiting for us in heaven. And quite frankly, I'm not afraid anymore. I'm not afraid to go, because I know my Aunt Norma is gonna be greeting me with a smile. I love you, Aunt Norma.
one of the worst pieces of advice I got in seminary was to never let people give eulogies at funerals. And I don't really know what that was about because I love to hear these stories in, in a heartfelt way, the people that know the loved one the most. And all three of you just did a beautiful job of painting a picture of Norma. I've, I've only been here at St. Paul since September, and so every one of you probably knew Norma better than I did. But I can speak a little bit to what I did know and what I have heard. And as you've already heard today, there's a lot to be said, a lot of stories to share, and I appreciate you leaving some of those I heard last night out of uh, today's messages. <laughs> last night was a, quite an experience for me. It really was, but in all good ways. And this has already been touched on. As I, as I was m walking through the room last night at the visitation, there is one word that every single person said to me about Norma, and you can guess what that word was, right? It was her smile. Yeah, you're saying it already. And that was also my experience with her as it was for all of you. And last night, as Ernie spoke to the family uh, at the end of the visitation, he, he said pretty much everything that I had already prepared to say this morning, <laughs> but the rest of you didn't hear it, so. <laughs> now, I, I cannot top Ernie's words last night, and I can say this, never in all my years as a priest have I heard a spouse talk so beautifully and eloquently and profoundly and lovingly about their loved one and to and about the other loved ones gathered, as I heard last night. I won't ever forget last night in the chapel of Lauren and Son's funeral home with this amazing family. I have a little bit more to say about that in a moment. But here's a, a normal story I can share with you. I think you can all relate to it. I'd only been here a little while at St. Paul's when I heard about Norma's illness. And at the first couple times I met her, I did not even know that she was sick and struggling as she was, as she was fighting this really long, hard, tough battle because, well, she was always smiling. How would you know, right, that anything was wrong? She was always gracious. She was so beautiful in person and in spirit. And don't you think it just kind of radiated from her? And once we, I learned of her illness, we did spend some time praying right here at this altar rail and, and in the pews after our 8 o'clock service. And as her struggle continued there, she still was when she could on Sunday morning smiling and exuding this spirit of Christ from her every pore. She always seemed delighted to see me. And let me tell you, as a priest of over 12 years, that is not always the case with my parishioners. <laughs> but Norma made me feel better. And that's a quality few people have, but when you encounter it, you really cherish that. You're all probably aware of a recent occasion when on a Sunday morning as they were getting ready to come to church, Norma had fallen and had cut her head pretty severely and had broken some bones in her neck, actually. And I went straight to Delray Medical Center after church looking for Norma and Ernie. I wandered into the ER, did not know where they were, so I was just calling their names out. Ernie, Norma! I knew Ernie wouldn't be able to hear me if I did it, but... <laughs> 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 but Norma did. <laughs> so I wandered to the back of the ER, and there they were in this trauma bay, and there's a couple people on either side of them. The curtains aren't pulled all the way, and they're sitting there in the middle. And Norma says, well, here's David, as I rounded the corner. And I rounded, and I'm greeted by the sight of her in this neck brace, you know, and wearing this horrible hospital gown and those enormous stitches on her head. She was a sight. You know, by the way, she was right then in the midst of a round of chemotherapy. But she was all Norma. She smiled, that smile, that wonderful smile. And she turned to me and said, David, you get right on over here. You're going to pray for us right now. So come on. <laughs> so I looked at Ernie. He looked at me, and he just kind of shrugged. <laughs> so we did. We held hands, and we prayed. And the patient in the cubicle next to us said, Amen, at the end of the prayer. Because I think he was drawn to Norma, too, like a moth to a light. He was a light. Norma fought so hard, so hard. She had to wear that daggum neck brace for weeks, 24-7, and later had to wear it again, suffering from a concussion, stitches in her head, undergoing chemotherapy all at the same time. She was a warrior, and she did it because she wanted to hang around as long as she could with Ernie and her loved ones. And because of her fight, they gained some precious extra time. And then it was time, time for Norma to make that transition from this life right into the next. 
and it was just like Norma to slip away peacefully in her sleep. No fuss. It's time to go. As I listened to this family speak last night, sharing these great stories of Norma, who was so many things to them, friend and wife and even mother to these children and aunt and grandmother and sister, and watching your eyes light up, the laughter, the sadness, of course, it all struck me profoundly. At least I think it was you who last night spoke about the passing of the matriarch of the family, and Reverend Kathleen had said the same words to me earlier that day, and it's true. Norma was a matriarch in every good sense of that word. Lori mentioned me to another great word for her, and that is catalyst. Because Norma was the gatherer, the planner, the adventurer, the smiling one, the dispenser of every good grace, the teacher of love and joy and fun and life and thrill and deep devotion. That's what good matriarchs do. Norma Simon was a matriarch of that family and of this church and in many ways, of this whole community. And we will all miss her terribly. In some ways, and sometimes, we'll wonder how to go on without her. But here's the good news. And it was so evident to me in that chapel last night that the matriarch did her job. Her spirit, her lessons, her way of being her, it has been handed down to you. Generations were there last night, and you heard, and you agreed, and you affirmed. And it will no doubt continue in all of your lives, in your words, and in your deeds, in your love. And because of that, it will continue right here in St. Paul's Church, and in Delray Beach, and Boynton Beach, and all the surrounding communities. For while her earthly body breathed its last a few days ago, and while her spirit is even now caught up in the light of Christ and in that heavenly city, Norma is also still here. I heard it clearly last night, didn't you? I left there amazed and buoyed and hopeful. Norma Simon was without a doubt one of a kind, but she did not leave without instilling in this family and in her friends and in her community a greatness that is unassuming and fun, loyal and genuine and true in every good way. Norma had shared with her sister Ruth a dream that she had the night before she died. It was a dream of a building full of people. And she says she wasn't quite ready to join them. But in another day, she was. A building full of people, isn't that exactly what Jesus describes in that gospel passage that we just heard? In my father's house. There are many rooms, many rooms. And one was prepared for Norma already. She saw that in that dream, I'm sure, and I'm sure that is what God was trying to show her, that this is a welcoming place, a place of joy, a mansion of holiness. And then, just as he promised, Jesus came and took her there to that place of light and love, pure love, where there is no more pain only joy. Can you see that? Can you picture that with me? Can you imagine Norma with that smile that you all love, those beautiful blue eyes as she really sees it all, sees it clearly? I'm going to share with you a portion of a poem by the Reverend David Schlaffer that reflects on the words from the book of Revelation that talks about when we do make our way into a heavenly city. And I think it fits Norma's transition to the next life so well. He writes, Jesus is not an up above us looking down on us, God. No, Jesus is a dwelling right alongside us, God. And using no words at all, rather the most tender of all human gestures, the risen glorified Jesus wipes away tears, one tear at a time, wiping and wiping for as long as it takes until with clear eyes, all God's children behold God's new city with clear eyes. Ernie, she loved life, and she loved you, and she still loves you. And now, with clear eyes, she is in the presence of our Lord where there is no more pain, only joy and everlasting life, and I am sure 
without a doubt that she's still smiling.